research and discovery. Futurists. Anne Coulier is a preservation expert at the Louvre, specializing in ceramics from ancient Greece. David Colin is an IT expert working on 3D technologies at this research and restoration center in Paris. The center is in the basement of the Louvre and one of its purposes is to preserve the documentation relating to tens of thousands of artworks. David and Anne are also experimenting with a new technology, digitalizing artifacts in 3D. This laser camera has two functions. First, it photographs the object to capture the colors. And secondly, a laser beam will slowly sweep the object to capture the topology. The detail captured is on the surface of the object. So if we take the colors out and use a raking light, like we do for paintings, we can see all the little details of the surface. Et qu'on utilise la lumière rasante, comme pour les tableaux, on va réussir à voir tous les petits détails de surface. Toutes ces informations. All this information will then be stored in the computer. Here at the Louvre, only a few dozen objects are digitalized in 3D each year because it is still so time-consuming and expensive. However, according to Anne Coulier, in the future, this technology could be a very useful research tool. The classic method relies on written reports, publications which contain very few illustrations, so it's obviously a big help using these 3D images which contain photographic coverage of each project. We can blow each minute detail up as large as we want so we can examine things in more detail. Even than when handling a vase, for example, there are things we might not have noticed. It's a very useful tool, this 3D imagery, when classifying styles. I mean, through comparing works, we try to reconstruct the people who made them and get a solid, living image of their workshop. The Greek island of Crete, a cradle of early European civilization, is full of archaeological treasures. It's an ideal place to try out 3D imaging as a way of preserving cultural heritage. This is an EU research project. Scientists, mainly IT technicians and software developers from all over Europe, are gathered here to share their research. The main aim is to perfect methods of digitalizing and documenting objects in 3D and to facilitate the daily use of this technology by professionals working in cultural heritage conservationists, restorers and archaeologists. David Arnold from Brighton University coordinates the project. We met him at the Archaeology Museum in Heraklion. To make documentation in 3D a practical reality, you have to make the technologies work better and you have to make it a practical proposition for normal situations, normal museums, normal uh, archaeological sites and so on. The big challenge is to deal with the world of cultural heritage and the world of technology and get them to share language, to get them to talk together, to get them to interact with a, a proper understanding. David went to Heraklion with his 3D scanner to show it to the Greek preservation experts at the museum. For them, it was a new discovery. They discussed the various possibilities opened up by this new technology. Not at all. The thing is, uh, we would like to see it too. That's a kind of... One part is in Greece. Yeah. So there is a problem with a missing part. Yeah. The parts are in Louvre, for example, the British yeah. Museum. Oh yes, Can we scan or in them? America. That would be very interesting for everyone to see what the object looks like in the end. Possibilities include virtual restoration, reconstructing objects from fragments scattered around various museums using a digital database. This 3D technology opens up numerous horizons. But there is still more work to be done before the technology is widely used, especially in changing attitudes. 
These people are not really used to using this type of technology. It's really new for them. And some of them are starting to see the use of it. And that's great for us, as well as for the preservationists, restorers and archaeologists, who see the point of it. Everyone wins and everyone's happy. But apart from professionals in this field, 3D is also getting interest from the public. Some European museums already have websites which allow people to see works in 3D. It's another way forward for researchers. A few years from now, there could be virtual museums, giving people a new way of exploring the past. If you have a, a valuable artefact in a museum, the public is not going to be allowed to walk up and pick it up and handle it. If you have a virtual artefact, then yes, you can do other things with that. You can blow it up and look at it from all angles and so on. You may also be able to do other things with it, like um, take it apart virtually, which you can't do in, with the real artefact. And why not ask the public to join in? Here in Belgium at the Catholic University of Leuven, researchers have developed a software called ARC3D. The idea is to make a 3D image from simple digital photos taken from different places. Each time we look at the castle from a slightly different angle. And that's the input we will give uh, to the system and the system will then find matches between all the images and will try to figure out at what position uh, I was each time. The advantage of this system is that you don't need uh, specialized equipment. Everywhere you can go with your camera, you can take images and then you just upload it to the web server and there we have a uh, a whole series of computers which will then do the work and recreate uh, the 3D the 3D model. It's getting into the whole area of crowdsourcing and other things that are taking place in technology which allow you to um, empower enough people that some of the issues we talked about with volume for example become less difficult. If there are 10 million people taking photographs and doing models, that's much likely to be much faster than 10,000 curators. <laughs> 3D digitalization is a great step forward in cultural preservation. Traditional museums will always have their place, but in the future there will be virtual ones as well.